Okay, so welcome again to Option Circle, everyone. And this is the session we are doing tonight. And we are going to be talking about introduction to charting. So um, charting is very important because it is where you can actually visually see a chart. And with some time and experience, you can get a handle and make decisions based on charts on trading, even investing. And we want to show you a lot of the techniques we use every day and literally profit, you know, and charting again is so important because it's hard to make decisions on our own. We need some kind of science. We need to create science out of what seems disorder. So, you know, we create and look at charts to help us to make it more objective. Because that's the biggest thing. If you want to be a good trader or investor, you have to learn how to control your emotion. Because if you're emotional and you're trading with emotion, you're going to fail most of the time. This helps you to make it more objective that, hey, this stock is in a downtrend. So I'm going to be looking for shorting or bearish opportunities. Or this stock is in an uptrend. So I'm going to be looking for bullish and buying opportunities. This stock is stuck in a range, so I'm going to use different tactics and I'm not going to buy it because my money is going to be stuck. So I'm going to talk about trends and all those things as much as possible. Uh, and it, this is just a high level initial, you know, of course, if you want to get deeper and learn deeper, you know, you could certainly, you know, come for private sessions or come to Option Circle or whatever, and we go deeper into it. So, um, so let's talk about the very basics. This whole art of looking at charts is called technical um, analysis. It's where you are looking at charts and using that to guide you in making decisions of probabilities. Again, nothing in the world is guaranteed, including charts. There's no guarantee on anything, but we are just trying to make it objective that, hey, this is telling me that maybe I could buy it, or maybe I could sell it, or maybe I should take profits. And it helps in, in so many ways. So we're going to show you that. So again, uh, this is charting and technical analysis. And we're gonna first start with candlesticks. Some of you may know it already. It's okay, because I want to start with the basics because this is the most important building block. And um, and I hate to call you out, Roger. Can you talk for a minute? I just want you to tell them how <laughs> you are using candlesticks and, and literally profiting from that, if you don't mind, if you're able to talk. Yeah, hi. Um, hey, so, yeah, hi. So, um, so we use some technical uh, indicators on our chart um, that that we use for mostly for every ticker that we trade. Um, the popular one being SPX. Uh, so I mostly trade SPX. So on SPX, I, I use the technical indicators like EMAs, SMAs, VWAP, um, some of the uh, the bands. Uh, MACD RSI, but in addition to that, the candlestick pattern is just a confirmation that um, that I use to take the trade because that really helps me out when to get in and when to get out uh, based on the particular pattern, like a hammer or a bullish angle swing, bearish angle swing, different kinds of candlesticks that we have. So if it's a bullish angle swing, that gives me a confirmation that I should get into the calls because the candle has formed and there is always the, and it's in the bottom of the support area. So um there is there is a good chance that that, that the stock would pump or jump uh, because of that particular pattern and we noticed that that's been happening regularly when we trade uh, and uh, we've been using the candlesticks more these days uh, in addition to these indicators that that really help us to take the trades be confidently and successfully thank you and again, I just pointed him out because, you know, obviously he's a great success story, uh, as are others not, you know, there's several people that have really are picking up the pace and we already have some members who are, uh, you know, been trading for years, including myself and others. So it's just nice, again, that we have this. And I just wanted to point him because he is also a success story and using all the techniques that, you know, we've trained over the years and learned, um, you know, kind of in the different sessions and so on. Uh, so anyway. So the candlesticks are these visual representations that are out there. And again, if you're brand new, this may be a foreign language. So I'm going to start from the beginning. The candlesticks are these figures, you know, that are out there. And you're going to be understanding these, hopefully today, if you don't already know them. 
So I'm going to start with a very basic on just a, what is a candlestick. A candlestick, and again, this is, you know, this was used by traders, rice traders in Japan like centuries ago, and they created these uh, candlesticks to kind of help them trade or et cetera. So it gives a much better representation than just having a line chart. It gives you a lot of information. So I'm gonna start with the very basic with just a candlestick. When you have a single candlestick, these again are all candlesticks. I'm on a daily chart. What does that mean? That means every one of these bars represents one day. This is a day, this is a day, so on, so on. So this is a daily representation of the price in this example of Microsoft. So it tells you what happened during that day. And it's not just, it doesn't just tell you close, it tells you more information. So when I look at one candlestick, the first thing I wanna talk about is the thick part in the middle is called the body, okay? And I'm gonna you know, share this back, but a lot of you may have this already. So a candlestick basic, you have a thick part in the middle called the body. So remember, that's the body. So example here, this is the body. This is the body. This is the body. That's the body. So the thick part in the middle is the body. Okay. Then you have uh, uh, these lines above and below that you can either call shadows or wicks, like a, a candle, W I C K. So these are shadows above and below. So this is the body, and these are the shadows. Okay. And if you're new, I'm going to explain how you figure out what's the open, high, low, and all that stuff. But again, body, shadow. And we're going to be talking about that. So I want to make sure you understand that. Um, so bodies are there and shadows are there. And obviously you can tell there are green bodies and there are red bodies, okay? So let's explain how do you figure out what each candle is. So very simply, you have a body and you have a shadow again, and you have red bodies and green bodies. What makes a green candle or a green body? So again, every morning, or every you know, time frame, the, the stock or whatever it is opens up. So they mark that opening price. So that's marked there. Then during the course of, let's say a daily chart, during the course of the day, the price moves down, moves up, and then it closes. They mark the closing price. So the open is marked, then the close is marked. If the close is higher than the open, they make that body green. Okay, so opened here, went low to here, high to here, closed here. And thus, because it closed higher than the open, it's a green body, okay? Another day you might open, go up, go down and close. If it closes lower than the open, the body is red, okay? So very important, the color of the candle is determined by the open to close relationship. Open to close relationship again. So. Um, I'm just gonna make sure there's no questions in the chat while I'm, um, anyways. So uh, open to close relationship determines the color of the body. And the highest point of the candle, no matter what color, is simply the highest price it traded sometime in the day. The low is, the lowest point is the lowest price it traded sometime in the day, okay? So let's look at an example and just understand this in a real candle. So for example, if I look at, uh, let's say this bar, let's say I'm gonna try to find a regular bar uh, here. This bar basically opened here for Microsoft on that day, opened at roughly 221.90. Boom, they marked that open. Then during the course of the day, sometime it went low as 221.28, that's the low. It went high as roughly 228.26, that's the high. And it closed here at 227.76. So this is the open, that's the close. That's the highest it went that day. That's the lowest it went that day. And it's a bullish bar because it closed higher than the open. So open to close determines the color of the candle and then the highest points and the lowest points, okay? So that is a green candle. A red candle, for example, is here. It opened here at uh, 250 roughly. During the course of the day, it went high as 251 roughly, low as 243, closed at 245, Boom, they mark that. And because it closed lower, it's red, okay? So open to close determines the color of the body. And that's why you have different shapes because it might just close a little higher than the open. And that's why it has a little body. It might close way higher than the open. That's 
you know, more bullish, obviously. And that's why it's a long, elongated body and vice versa for the short body. So obviously when you get these big bodies, that's very bullish or very bearish because it's closing so much lower and that's a bearish bar. So very simply, that is a candlestick body and the shape and how you determine that. Hopefully there's no questions on that. And if so, feel free to ask. Okay. All right. So now when we understand that, now we're going to be talking about candlesticks in particular and certain candlesticks because these candlesticks tell a lot of stories. If nothing else, just the colors of the candlesticks tell you a story. Okay. So let's look at example Tesla. It's been in a down nasty trend recently. Well, pretty obvious. It's closing lower than the open every single day. Okay. If I had a line, I, you know, of course it looks downward, but this gives me more of a representation of the trend and what the stock is doing. So this you would say, hey, is a bearish stock because it's closing lower every day. And that's why you don't want to be trying to pick the bottom of it. And you either will be playing it downwards like we've been doing and profiting. Again, to a reminder, if you're new to trading, you can make money on stocks going up or down. That's the beauty of trading. And especially with options at Option Circle, we buy calls when we think it's going to go up or we buy puts if we think it's going to go down. And we have made a lot more on puts this year for sure. And, and, and that's why it's so important to learn these and visually just kind of quickly you can look at it and say, oh my God, that's a downtrending stock. I'm not picking the bottom of that and trying to be a hero. I'm going to ride the wave down with it. And that's how you make money. And vice versa, you know, if something is in a nice, Every day it's closing higher than the open, that's bullish. That's the one you want to ride long up. So again, if nothing else, they just give you a color representation, if that makes any sense. So that's one thing, how you use candles. Next thing is that you have particular candles that we were just talking about that have a lot of importance. The first candle I'm gonna talk about that we talk about a lot at Option Circle, as well as you know, traders, is that is called a hammer. It has a little body and a long shadow. That's a hammer. And if you look at it, it kind of looks like a hammer that you hit nails with. So that's a hammer. And I'm going to talk about that hammer because this is a critical one that I know like Rod for sure and all of us use a lot. And it has made us a lot of money because we kind of take advantage of it. So let me explain what a hammer is. This is a hammer, has a little body, a long shadow. This is a hammer. It looks like a hammer. Okay. Now, why does a hammer, what is it? Why is it important? Many times, again, nothing is 100%. Everything is in context. If it's at the right place, it can have a lot of significant value. So this hammer is a potential turning point, bottom up, or sometimes I'll show you examples top down. So hammers create these turns. And I'm going to talk about the psychology too, because every candlestick, every pattern, everything has psychology behind it. And that's the most important thing to understand the psychology, because that's going to make you money when you understand what's going on. Because I don't want to teach you, or we don't want to teach you just something to memorize, but to understand the mechanics behind it. So please bear with me, because I'm just trying to be thorough and explain these candlesticks well, if you don't mind, because that's important. So what happens when stocks are falling? or when prices are falling, there are shorts or people who short stock who make money shorting stock. And if you don't know what shorting stock is, look it up later. Shorting stock is when you make money downwards, okay? So shorts make money by selling stock and buying to close when they wanna close their positions. They sell first and buy later. So they are happy when stocks are falling. They're shorting, they're shorting, they're making money. But what there may come a time, for example, on this day, for example, the stock opened up here and then it really started to collapse during the day. Again, this is going on during the day, it's collapsing. And while it's collapsing, all the shorts are jumping in because they are shorting in more thinking, oh, this thing is gonna go to nothing. They're shorting, 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 making money. But then at the end of the day or the time period, it comes back and closes at the high. So when it closes at the high, the guys who are shorting down here are trapped 
and they're losing money because now it's up higher than their short point. So they're trapped. And then the guys who may have shorted up here are still profitable, but their profit is declining. Now, here's the deal. This is basically a place where we're watching on the other side as a trader. We're like, oh, we have a hammer. Hmm. Okay, so this is how we use a hammer. We wait as a trader on the other side. We want to see, okay, are, is this going to be a potential turn? So what I, what I always suggest is you see a hammer, don't do anything, the conservative approach, wait for the next day and make sure that it opens higher than the highest point, okay? Just somewhere higher and holds that a little bit because, and I'll show you even on the day charts, intraday charts, because what you want to do, you don't want to buy this hammer this day. Because if you buy, let's say at the close, thinking it's going to go higher, it may open down here and you're trapped going lower. So the conservative approach is don't just buy the hammer. You could, and it works many times, but it's a little risky because you may buy it at the close and next day it opens down here and you're trapped too. So we just want to make sure that it's going to show this kind of a turn that, okay, it opens up higher and holds a little bit. And, and I'm going to talk about the side from the shorts because the, they're also looking. They may not get out of their shorts. They're going, to ha um, they're going to hold on and make sure that it's not going to open higher because if it opens lower, they're happy. They're like, oh, great. We're good. So when it opens higher and holds higher, these shorts start closing up. They buy to close. And that creates a turn up. They're buying to close. New buyers like us are coming and buying, creating a buying pressure, and it creates this kind of vacuum where it turns up. So again, it's where shorts get trapped many times, and then buyers come in, and then it can continue higher many times. So it's a turning, uh, potential turning bar. And again, this is what it looks like. And I want to make somebody ask a great question. Does it matter if the hammer is green or red? It does not matter. It can be red or it can be green. The key is little body, long shadow, okay? Because a little bit of difference makes it red or green, okay? So I'm going to show you an example. This is a red hammer that turned up, okay? And then, you know, uh, you know then there's, let me show you an example here. This is a, and you can give it a little leeway. It's not all, you know, it can, it can be like this and not all the way at the top. So this is a green hammer. Okay, so the color doesn't matter. The key is it's 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 this, it's this formation. Okay, so hopefully that answers that question. The color doesn't matter, but that confuses people. It's the shape, small body, long shadow. Okay, a couple more points. Uh, and some of you that have taken sessions with me know hopefully these points, but I want to make sure everybody else does. So a um, couple points that are important, especially for you premium members as we were trading SBX. Um, the deeper, the better too. The deeper, the better. Why? Because the lower it goes, the more shorts that jump in that are going to be the fuel for the up move. Every move needs fuel. Okay, I always say that. Every move needs fuel. That fuel can be shorts trapped and or buyers coming in. If you have both, you have a golden trade. So just a couple of points. A small hammers work too, but if you get a nice deep one, it comes back up, you know shorts are trapped there or going to get trapped, especially if you get a confirmation above. So you look, remember that longer, you're happier as a buyer. Okay. A couple more points. We also like when the volume is high. This is total volume for that day. And this, you know, if you have the studies, this is an average volume. This is a way above average. So that tells you that, hey, there's a lot of um, volume in there. And what is that volume? It's shorts and it's buyers. A lot of volume, and especially the shorts are going to be your, your great ones that you're going to be happy squeezing and taking their money. So volume is good too. Uh, high volume, you love that, okay? And I'm not there yet, but I want to mention another point to those that are kind of a little bit uh, knowledgeable. You love these, especially at support levels. Okay, if you have a support level from the past or whatever reason, and you get the hammer coming out of it, again, a higher probability trade. 
not guaranteed, but a higher probability. So don't forget, um, <laughs> somebody made a funny comment. Don't forget shorts are not that stupid too. They trap us too. Yes, and I'm gonna show you where they trap us on the upside. Uh, but anyways, so um, the hammer uh, volume is good. Deeper is good. Uh, and again, um, it, it's a great potential place where it turns. And the fuel comes from the shorts trap too. So that's the first point there. Now I wanna talk about stops, okay? Every good trader should use stops, okay? These are not always gonna work, okay? And that's why we gotta have stops. And I wanna tell you where I put my stop or where I suggest people put stops is always the low of the hammer, okay? If you buy, for example, here, you're okay if it plays around, plays around and slowly works higher, but you don't wanna buy and it comes and cracks or breaks this level. Because if it does, it's probably going to go lower. And that's where the experts like Raj, when it does that, we get out of our long and we double up on the downside because it's going lower and probably gonna go deeper, okay? So just remember that if you are going to buy a hammer turn, you have to have a stop and you know move it here, have it here for starters. And then as it works out, certainly move that stop up, kind of trail it up. OK, and you can set alerts. What I suggest to uh, people is, you know, if you and this goes for whether you're buying stock or options, it doesn't matter. I'm just talking about any trade, long trade. OK, if you're going to buy the stock. Based on this pattern, put your stop here. OK, because if it cracks here, it's probably going to go lower. And again, sometimes what will happen is it'll come it'll bounce, bounce and work higher. That's fine. And a, a little more. Um, some traders, I, I'm for myself, for example, I'm okay even if it goes below, but closes back above. I'll even allow that. Okay. So let me explain that. If I'm, this is my stop. Sometimes I don't put a hard stop. I, I will set alert. So that's what I suggest to you. If you have any platform, just set an alert that let me know when it's below this level. And then it'll alert you. And then you can decide what you want to do. Look at the news, see if anything's wrong, something is up and make a decision, set alerts rather than hard stops. But again, if you don't have time, just set hard stops. Um, so uh, again, somebody said long, longer wick is better. Yes, correct. Longer wick is better uh, for a hammer, okay? So anyways, um, so what I was saying here, stops here, I'm okay if it goes below and closes above, but what you do not want is a close below that level. If you got a close below that level, 80% of the time it's gonna go lower. Okay, so remember that. If it closes below it, just move on. Okay, don't be, don't be, have hopium as, as I call it, and waiting and having hope that it's going to come back. It's usually going to go lower. Okay, so that's hammer, uh, sh longer shape, higher volume, and I'm going to show you how we use it on the for you uh, premium members, especially. Like I'm going to, this is the SPX um, three minute chart. Okay, and I'm going to show you how and you guys have seen it all day and, and and it's and i'm going to suggest to you all because i know we all have these um hairy charts that we're using you know uh that we're using in our, our platinum group uh which is great but I, i'm going to suggest to you set up a clean one too without all the hairy stuff on one screen or something and then you're going to see these so much cleaner and better uh than having it on, on these uh these are good too but this I just realized today and I started doing this, having one screen with just clean candlesticks. I don't want all that noise and I'm looking for the setup. OK, and again, this is some examples here. Where prices came down short, 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 they're shorting, 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 they're making money uh, and then they short it. And then it closes at the high. The shorts are in. It goes higher. The shorts have to close to buy and you get this beautiful turn. OK, SPX doesn't have volume, but if I were if, it, if I were to do another thing, it would we'd be looking at the volume, too. But just to show you how it's nice when you get these and we get these all day. Raj will tell you himself all the time and, and four, six, nine figures are being made in just these you know, patterns. So, again, uh, just to show you, this is a hammer turn. OK, and now I'm going to flip it around and talk about the inverted hammer where the shorts are eating our lunch like people are saying uh, that somebody's made a great point um so let's talk about the inverted hammer okay um the inverted hammer is the opposite 
it's where you go up. Okay, it's an upside down hammer. It's where you go up and you turn down. You go up and you turn down. And I'm going to show you that and, and explain what's happening there. Okay, so inverted hammer is like this. It's up, is this one. Okay, it's the hammer too, but it's upside down. Why? What does that mean? It's the opposite. Prices are going up, buyers are buying, they're buying, they're buying, they're buying, they're buying, 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 buying. They're happy, they think we're going higher. But then at the end of the bar, it closes the lows. Now the longs are trapped. And then as it drops, the longs start selling to close, creating a turn down. And this is where the shorts eat the lunch of the longs, okay? So this is the opposite. The longs are trapped. So remember, somebody's always trapped, I mean, most time. And we're looking on the other side of the trap to not be the guys that are getting trapped or girls. So um, this is your rejection, as we would say, and this is a um, inverted hammer, okay? And you know, some people call it shooting stars with this pattern, and we'll talk about that later. But again, hammer inverted is what we look for in our world where we buy puts and make money when things drop, okay? And the longer the shadow, the better more longs trapped, okay? You have to be an equal opportunity butt kicker in the world of trading, okay? You cannot be bullish, you cannot be bearish, you have to be a neutralist and don't care and don't have sympathy for anybody and, do, and, 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 and be like a shark and just go for whoever and trap them. And that's how you're gonna make money, honestly. And if, and if you've been that soft person only long, you've been, you, your lunch has been, taken very much so just want to make those points um uh, you just being real uh so again this is a bearish inverted hammer and and short longs get trapped okay so we use these to buy puts and we make a lot of money with that or in our world of options we can sell calls or if you're a short person who likes short stock that's where you would be shorting stock if you know what you're doing of course um but best ways with puts um so anyway inverted hammer a regular hammer, you can see it. Same thing, the higher the volume, the more important. And I'm gonna make one more point, just like you have a stop on the downside, this becomes your stop on the upside. If you are going to play it downwards and it comes and breaks through here, it's probably going higher, okay? Then you wanna double up the other way because it's gonna go higher, okay? So this becomes your long point even sometimes. Sometimes you might see this pattern and then I watch the bars and I see you hitting, hitting. Then when it breaks through, I go long, okay? So just remember, you can also trade it the other way too if you're a little more um, savvy. So just want to make that point. Inverted hammer, hammer uh, is what we use and we see them all the time, all day, every day, and we use them to our advantage, okay? So that's your hammer. Hopefully that's a good explanation. And if anybody has a question that you want to ask real quick, Awesome. So now Mr. let's go to the next. Yes. Uh, it's a great explanation. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good to hear that. And, and that's why it's so important because most people are just going to teach you hammer, you know, buy, sell, whatever. But no, you got to know why and what's happening because it's all psychology that's going on and in play in the market. And if you don't know that, you're going to, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to succeed, honestly. Um, so it's so important to know why this is happening. Why is this pattern a, a chance for a reversal up or a reversal down? You know, we see them all the time. I'll show you, you know, some quick examples. You know, um, you know, if I go to any stock, you know, they're always going to have uh, just nice, um, you know, hammers and all the other patterns happening, you know, where you're going to get these hammers and they're going to turn up. And, and I've been showing you, by the way, on a daily chart, but I also showed you on any time frame, you know, you, you can find these things. Like, look at this, this caterpillar randomly. Hammer, you get the nice turn, you get the turn up. Look at this hammer right here. You get the turn down, you get the turn up. So you'll see them all the time as a day trader, as a uh, swing trader on a daily chart, or as a longer term trader even. You know, if I were to look through on a weekly, which is each one of these represents a week, you're gonna find nice hammers for like swing trades that you can hold for weeks, uh, you know, with all these patterns I'm gonna show you. So it doesn't matter what stock I put up, they all are going to have these candlesticks showing up, inverted hammers, 
inverted hammers. And I know it's easier after the fact to show them, but we see them in real time and we use them in real time. So I, we know that it works and, and that, that's a fact, you know, it's not even just, um, we're not making it up. So um, is there any specific chart for looking at pattern candles and hammers? Specific, I don't know if you mean by time frame. Uh, somebody says, is there any specific chart preferred for looking at candles and hammers? Okay, maybe you're asking what time frame. So it comes down to your trading style. Are you a day trader? Then good, thank you. Are you a day trader? Then we focus as a day trader on the one minute, we focus on the five minute and the 15 minute. Okay. And then if you are a swing trader, you're going to be focused on swing trading, meaning where you hold it for maybe a couple of days, then you're going to be looking at the hourly charts, which I think are fantastic too, to look at and look for these patterns on an hourly chart. And, uh, and then a daily chart. Okay. But no matter what, whether you're a day trader, swing trader, I always say the daily chart is king. The daily chart is king. Don't forget that. Even if you're a day trader, you always want to come back and look at the daily chart to get understanding of what the stock is doing, what's the trend, and so on that you know we're going to explain over the course of time, um, that you understand that. Otherwise, um, you, you're not aware of the big picture, and you're going to fail, and you're going to buy not knowing that, hey, on the daily chart, this has an inverted hammer, and if you're not looking at that, you're going to buy it, and you're going to fail. Okay, or vice versa, you know? So make sure you look at that daily chart. That's one of the biggest things I say, okay? Great question. Next thing is the longer time frame, the more trustable the candle is? Absolutely. The bigger the time frame, like a weekly candle is even more important. Okay, look at this. Apple, for example, this is an inverted hammer at the top, okay? If you saw that on a weekly chart, then that's gonna play out probably for a, a bit, okay? And it did for multiple weeks in this case. Okay, so make sure if you're an a, a investor, a swing trader, or any trader really, keep an eye at the end of the weekend or whatever, go look at your weekly chart and just kind of see what's my stock doing. Because if you have an ugly pattern on the weekly chart, it, it, there's a problem, you know? So make sure you look at your weekly charts because you know you get these inverted hammer on a weekly, people are not even looking at that and they're buying and then they're gonna fail, okay? Or vice versa, you might get a hammer at the bottom Okay, and then you're like, oh, you're you're selling, thinking it's going lower, and then it's going to slowly work higher. So make sure you look at those. The bigger yeah, the time uh, frame, to answer that question, the bigger the uh, the value. Sorry, Raj, go ahead, please. Yeah. So basically, I um I agree with Sandeep what he's saying, but see, basically the weekly chart is really helpful for looking at the overall trend of the stock. But again, it really depends on what kind of trade you're doing. Are you doing a weekly trade, daily trade, or a swing trade? Are you going to keep for long term? So you have to you have to look at the overall trend on the weekly or a daily time frame. But when you're trading, you need to look at the shorter time frames for that. And the longer longer trend might be down, but the shorter trend can be up. So just because on the longer trend it's down doesn't mean that you should just stick to the short side only. It all depends on your trade. Perfect. Good. Yep. So it depends on the your trade, your trading style, and your type of trading because not everybody's a day trader, even in our group. Not everybody's a swing trader. Not everybody's an investor. So we have so many variety of people. So you have to figure out what works for you or what you're capable of. Day trading is not for everybody. It, it, will, it will mess you up because you're watching every tick. You're gonna go crazy. And it's only for certain people who can do it. And it's fantastic uh, you know, if you can. But again, swing trading is good for a lot of people because they can hold it. So it depends on your time frame exactly. And it depends on your strategy. And you're going to learn it. People that will, they're like, well, what's the best strategy? It really varies from everybody, which is crazy. And we can make money with our different styles. And so again, um, somebody asked the question, how do you read if the one minute, five minute and 15 minute are showing differently? Again, it depends on your um, your type of trading. You know, if, the, if I'm a, if I'm a, uh, uh, intraday trader like we do in the day doing uh, in our uh, option circle a lot is we're looking at the one minute and we're, we're lo looking at the one minute and we're looking at the five minute okay and then what we do at least for me is I'm looking at the five minute and then I'm looking at the one minute for the little scalpy trades and I'm looking at the five minute for a little bit longer but if I get the same on both for example if this is telling me buy and this is telling me buy I'm jumping because I'm like good two things telling me that. So again, 
of course, the more that line up, it's not all going to line up, but the more that line up, the better. So if that hopefully answers that question. Um, but good point about that, that it depends on your style of trading. Um, so that was your inverted hammers, hammers. Uh, now we're going to talk about the next pattern. And I'll, you know, then we'll, we'll do a few because I know it takes uh, a bit to go through all these. And, but I want to be thorough. I don't like to just kind of like just give you and hope you, you know, without the explanations. So uh, inverted hammer, hammer we talk about. Next one is called a doji. A doji is a plus sign, looks like a plus sign or a cross, okay? A doji is a plus sign or a cross, okay? It's kind of like just a truce or it's a, you know, just, it doesn't mean anything on its own, but, okay, let me explain what a doji is. Doji looks like a plus sign or a cross, okay? So it's basically, for example, like this, like this, it's a plus sign or a cross. It's just kind of like a state of indecision. The market opens, the stock opens, it goes up, it goes down, and pretty much closes where it's opened. So it's almost, a, it's, it's pretty much nothing really happened, okay? So it's like a state of truce between the bulls and bears, okay? And then sometimes it just, you know, it's, it's just you're aware of what it is, number one, we wanna make sure you know what is a doji. We talk about dojis all day at, at OC, and we wanna make sure you know what it is. And secondly, you know, what does it mean? So dojis are a state of truces, but many times, they can create turns, kind of like a hammer, not as strong as a hammer though, but just want you to be aware, they can create turns. Sometimes you'll get, a, you know, you'll get a doji, then a doji, and sometimes you'll get a series of dojis and then it'll turn down. And that tells you that's a turn, okay? So dojis can be turns and we see them all the time, every day, all day. And again, on all time frames, um, you know, let me give you some examples of some dojis here. And the color again, does not matter. Okay, it's the shape. Okay, at the top of a range, when it goes up, it can create a turn with a doji, and that is a, you know, kind of a, a, a turn. An example, you know, like what happens many times is that uh, you form a. Let me go make it bigger. Uh, doji, you know, you, you you kind of go down and you'll form a doji turn up, or you'll go up and form a doji turn down. I'm not going to get into all the fancy names because you don't want to confuse yourself. Just know, I just call it a doji turn, okay? It's where it goes up, forms a doji and turns down. That's bearish. And then when you go down and form a doji up, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, a potential move up. So again, the color does not matter to answer that question. And it's more the shape and the, the, this formation. This is a doji turn. Okay, I just keep it simple. I'm not gonna get all the fancy terms. And this is a doji turn here. And then this at the end of the day started the doji turn up. Okay, so these dojis, again, they, 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 you'll see them all the time, but it's more when they come at resistance and support that they're more important, okay? So like, for example, some of you may not know what resistance is, but this is resistance from here. And exactly there, it turned there giving you a lot of reasons to take a short trade. Okay, this was resistance here, doji turn. This is a resistance here, doji turn, okay? So that is just something to be aware of that you get these dojis turn, just like a hammer turn. Hammer, again, I would give it a higher hierarchy, uh, but I just want you to be aware, what is a doji turn? It's like this, okay? Red body, a lot of times, doji and a green body, this is a beautiful turn. Okay, you can buy calls sometimes. And I'll make one more point. The low is always your stop. If I'm going to buy this turn, I'm going to get out if it cracks this. If I'm going to short this turn with puts or whatever, I'm out if it does this, okay? It's not always going to work. That's why you got to have stops. I'd rather take a small loss than a big loss holding on, okay? So just remember your stops are always at any of these things. Um, uptrend hammer, uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, yeah, sorry, I'll continue with the do dojis. That's that. And then um, again, the color doesn't matter. Somebody asking that question. Uh, okay, so we're not going to answer. Sorry about the, the questions on spreads and all that. That's we'll save that for another session on options. Um, so um, so hammers, dojis. Any uh, hopefully no questions on that. Any questions on um, hammers or dojis? Anybody before I move on? Hey, hey, Sandeep. Uh, yes. So so yeah. normally you're saying that hammer is mostly 90% is a bullish sign and inverted hammer is mostly like a bearish sign. 
Okay, I'm gonna, yes and no, yes, but in context, okay? A hammer is bullish at a support level. Hmm, okay. Okay, not just because you see a hammer, because you're gonna see hammers in the middle of a range. That really doesn't mean a lot, okay? It, it still can work. Okay. But hammers, and again, I'm doing step by step, uh, you know, like we're just talking about candlesticks today, support and resistance we'll do next time. But I just want to make sure you understand in context, and it's a great question you're asking. Thanks for asking. Because the hammer is important at the bottom of a range when prices fall and they come to a range. And then when you look to the left and you're like, oh, there's support here, then it might work even better. Okay. Gotcha. So that's your buy. Okay. Shorts. Okay, look at that. We have an inverted hammer here. Like, okay, great. Of course, that probably is going to pull it back. But I looked at the left, I'm like, whoa, that was resistance in the past. You know, at 11, 12 mm -hmm. this morning, you know. And I'm looking at a three minute chart. And I think, I think I really, I'm really liking this three minute chart when I was looking at it today um, because it was giving some nice patterns. And again, you know, you guys at OC can look tomorrow as well. Uh, and again, uh, this is, I think, is a great suggestion. Set up a clean chart set it up and just kind of have it on the side and kind of observe. Uh, of course, you're not gonna have my labels, but you'll see things and it's pretty interesting. So anyway, uh, what I was saying is that, oh yeah, when you have an inverted hammer and it's at previous resistance, then you give it more weight. Like, okay, it's probably gonna pull back. Of course, your stop is there if it's not, doesn't, okay? So does that answer your question? Yeah, 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 thanks for that. Yep. Perfect, yeah, everything in context, everything yep. in context. That's the biggest thing I'm going to just say again and again. Uh, volume matter, yes, the higher the volume on a doji, for example, the greater the chance of a turn. And let me explain why. Because if, in this scenario, uh, buyers try to take it higher, shorts try to take it like lower. If you have a lot of volume, there's probably a lot of buyers that came in thinking we're going higher. And when it goes, the high volume, if I, there's no volume on SPX, but if it was, then you would be like, okay, great. Then somebody's going to get trapped and you'll get a turn. Same thing on the downside up. If you have high volume, there's probably a lot of shorts that are going to get trapped on a turn. Okay. So yeah, if you see high volume on any of these inflection points, you get happy and have a better shot. Okay. But no matter what, got to have your stop. I want to make sure I clarify that. Not always these are going to work, but the times that do, you're going to get paid nicely. And the times that don't, you're going to take small losses. Okay, um, so that's a good question. All right, cool. Any other questions on the hammers or dojis? And, um, you know, for the sake of my uh, option circle people, let me go ahead and tell you guys this because we talk about this. Okay, so let me talk about the, just, I know I'm kind of going off track a little bit, but again, I think it's important. The, the inverted hammer is bearish at the top of a range, okay? but it's actually bullish at the bottom of a range, okay? It's kind of the opposite. Again, I don't want to confuse you guys, and I'm sorry for new people, but again, I just want to go ahead and point this out. It's very interesting that we've seen it all the time in Arajas too. We'll get an inverted hammer down here, and it'll bounce from there, okay? It's a little some different psychology going on there, uh, but again, uh, just want to mention that. So it's where it happens is very important, okay? If you get an inverted hammer at the top of a range, that's more potential short. If you get the bottom of a range, it's potentially actually a bounce point, which is very interesting. And then same thing for the hammer. If I get this hammer down here, it's potential for a bounce. But if I get a, a hammer at a higher range, this is not a great example. I don't feel like looking for it right now. But if it happened at a higher level, let's just say that was a higher level, then actually that's bearish. And you'll usually get a pullback from that. Okay, so just remember not to confuse you. You know, first learn that basic what I told you earlier, but just remember if it's happening at the lower range, it's the opposite. And we'll talk about that more in detail later, but I just wanted to quickly mention that because I know we talk about that a lot and we use that a lot. We will say inverted hammer at the down here. Then you're thinking, wait a minute, what do you, isn't that bearish? No, that's actually the opposite. Uh, and sorry for the confusion. Um, so basically, so, all these patterns have have a meaning in the context that it's <laughs> in the down the support level. It's more like a bullish, and if it's on the resistance level, it's more a bearish one. Even doji, inverted hammer, hammer, anything you take. 
exactly exactly yep so so you know I, I don't know if i'll be able to find one now but yeah you know if we had you know uh yeah like right here right this great example right here this is a kind of a sorry it's a little hairy but you know not the best example but again if that's a inverted hammer happening at the lower region that's a potential for a bounce okay and vice versa if i find a hanging man somewhere it would be the opposite um you know for the other the hanging man is the uh, i'm going to show you again and you hopefully will all get this or have this it's in our um, channel as well uh hanging man is this one where the hammer forms at the top of a range and it'll actually bring it down which is interesting okay so so again, if memorize these, you know, that this is bearish, but this also is bearish at the top of a range, okay? And this is bullish, like we've been saying earlier, the hammer. And then if you have the, this hammer down here, it's actually bullish, okay? So, and I know it takes a while to get it, but I just want to point that out, it's very important. So if don't confuse yourself with these for now, if nothing else, learn the first two things I taught you. And, and that's going to take you far too. Okay. But over time, you're going to get this too. But especially, I'm just telling you, especially for the uh, premium members, because you guys, we want to make sure that you're making money and understanding because we're talking about this all day, every day. So that's how that works. Okay. All right. So now let's go back and talk about, um, let's see what time. Uh, uh, yes. I have, to, I have a question regarding Doji. Yeah. Uh, don't, you have, don't you have to look for confirmation candle after Doji for a reversal? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So for example, if I, let's say, you know, we were here, you know, I can't make a decision just there. I need to let the other one form and come lower and close lower. Okay. That is what I'm looking for. So yes, on its own, it really doesn't have a lot of value. It's what happens after. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, right. Yeah. It's a good question. Yeah. So, you know, there you, you, you can't do anything, but once it does this, then a lot of times we'll, we'll take our short trade and then we just wait a little bit and it'll eventually cave in. Okay. Same for the upside, you know, when we had, um, you know, um, uh, you know, if we have a doji up, you know, we want to wait for a green after that. Okay. It's so a red doji green. Okay. Maybe it's going to work. Okay. So yes. Doji green. red or green doesn't matter, right? Yep, exactly. Because a little bit of difference makes it red or green. Okay. Mm -hmm. Key thing is it looks like a plus sign or a cross. Red or green doesn't matter. That's okay. a very important question. Good question. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, let's see. So it's 10 20. I'm gonna just you know do a couple more because I don't want to um take too too long from everybody's time. And we're gonna continue this, so just you know, don't worry. Um so let's see, we did we did doji and hammer, and I'm going to do uh two more bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing, okay? So these are single candle patterns. Now I'm going to look at two candle patterns. One is called a bullish engulfing, okay? And then you have a bearish engulfing. Let me explain this. It's for, let's start with the bullish side. You have a red body, and now we're gonna compare body to body, okay? The wicks really don't matter, okay? Believe it or not, we're looking at the body to body, okay? So you have a red down body, and then you have a green bigger body. So what happens, the, sh the, the shorts come in, they have a down day, they're happy. They're thinking they're, they're happy, they're set. The next morning, this is the key. The next morning or the next time period, it opens lower. It opens lower. It opens lower. That's why I wanna make sure you understand that. When it opens lower, the shorts are like, great. We have a great, we're, we're, we're gonna make money. They usually take it down. And then during the course of the day, bulls come in, close it up and high, and this creates a bullish engulfing pattern. The bulls, it's almost like a bully. It's like this big green bully looking down at the red, like, no, you're not, you know? So this is a bullish trade. Let me show you some examples of that. And we see them all the time, you know? Um, and I'm gonna show you, um, um, I'll show you in a different um, time frame. Again, these work on all time frames. Of course, um, you know, we see them all day, every day as well. Uh, let's see, Apple. Okay, let me show you an example here. Okay, let me show you what, what, what it means. Um, so this is a small micro down body, but regardless, it's a down. The bears are happy, like, yay, we took it lower. They're, they leave, they go home happy. And then guess what? The next morning, again, as I said, it opens lower. When it opens lower, the bears like, oh my gosh, we're, we're golden. Let's take this to the ground. They take it lower, 
But during the course of the day, bulls come in strong, close it high. And you see how this big green body overtakes the red body? That's a bullish engulfing. Bulls are like, you know, basically like a bully taken over. And a lot of times you'll get a nice turn up from that. Okay. This is a bullish engulfing. This is a bullish engulfing. Small red body. And this is a beautiful one, actually, even just for a quick trade, because you had a hammer and a bullish engulfing. So if you if you get more of these things together, you, you get excited. Uh, so anyway, a hammer, bullish engulfing. And again, everything in context, of course, if it happens at a support level, like here, you're, you're, you're like, yes, I think I'll take the shot. Okay. So bullish engulfing, big green overtakes red. That's a bullish trade. And let me show you on the SPX, just some examples um, that we, you know, uh, in real time today. Um, bullish examples. Uh, uh, let's see if we had. You know, and then again, a lot of times in the intraday, you don't really get the um, lower open because it's just it just kind of. Uh, yeah, around 12 o'clock. Yeah, right. OK, yeah, probably on the one minute, right? No, in okay. the same in the chart, you can see at 12 o'clock. I just saw 12 o'clock. Oh, OK, beautiful, 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 beautiful. You're right here. Beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. Good eye. <laughs> um, OK, so again, you have a red body opens lower. And then it comes in and closes higher. This is like a bully. And then it, you get a nice pull up. And this, I know, Raj, for you, you, right? Take a lot of good trades on these, right? And this is probably bullish, one of our yeah, top. Yeah, bullish engulfing is like, it's a gold mine. So okay. basically, you don't even need to wait, wait for the confirmation. Next candle definitely will try to at least open higher. So uh, yeah, bullish engulfing is like, especially on the downside, when you see a bullish engulfing, it's, it's, you, you, you just have to jump in. Great, great. Um, so, so, so this works on uh, one minute, two minute, uh, any any yeah. uh, time frame? Yeah we, see, yeah, we see it all day. And even in one minute, we see them all the time. And, you know, I know Raj used them like right here. Uh, this was a uh, bullish engulfing yeah. here on the one minute, okay. right? So, yeah, I mean, you, you'll see them. Like, look at this. How beautiful is that? Mm. And this is where probably the big, you know, <laughs> big trades are put in. <laughs> The B I G G G trades. Um, so, um, so you put the trade after this, after the green candle that you're pointing out. After it finishes, right, Raj? Yeah, after the formation of the candle, you want to see that bullish engulfing candle formed. Until then, you got to wait because it can always change the shape of the candle anytime while it's forming. So you have to wait until the candle is formed. Okay, thanks, Raj. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and somebody asked a question, what are the red dots on the chart? That's a moving average, by the way. That's my 20, 20 period moving average. Uh, so anyway, we'll talk about moving averages next time. But um, so uh, back to what we're talking about bullish engulfing, that's examples right there. And you saw it and, and you, this is real time. We see them, we let it finish and we just go. Okay. And, and again, you'll get a, usually, a, a, you know, if nothing else, a little move up, you know, ideally sometimes you'll get nice moves. Um, but yeah, that's the one that you don't have to wait for confirmation. That is the confirmation, okay? And I would say in a hierarchy, this is probably one of the top ones, you know, of the bullishest. Yeah. If that's, if that's a term, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I think you pounce on it, right, Raj? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. And of course, I don't need to wait for the confirmation, as I said. Just once the candle is formed, if it's confirmed that it's a bullish engulfing or a bearish engulfing, uh, you just take the trade on the uh, on the on the side. Like if Beautiful. it's bullish, you do a call. If it's a bearish engulfing, you do a put. Uh -huh. So once you take the trade, right? Like let's say on the bullish engulf engulfing, right? So mm -hmm. you wait for like five points and quit, or like when do you uh, again, know? It, again, again, it all depends. You got to watch the succeeding candles, and you, you, just because mm -hmm. it one candle is a bullish engulfing, it can the next candle can put a doji and then turn. So you just gotcha. have to watch each candle by itself. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah. Uh, you need to check whether you're in the support or resistance to take that. Trade. Yes. I want to make, well, I mean, for the way like I know Raj trades scalping and stuff, I think he just takes a lot of time. But of course, generally speaking, if it's at a support and resistance, it's a higher probability. Okay. So that's very important. Yeah. Generally speaking, you know, especially on the daily charts and stuff, I give it more weight at, at, when it's at a support level. You know, so for example, you know, if I get, uh, you know, let's just say this is a bullish engulfing, 
you know, and I'm like, oh, great. That was support in the past. That was support in the past, so on and so on. Then I probably expected it should go higher again. Okay. So like bullish engulfing here. Great. Because it is support here. So again, you know, it, it'll work until it doesn't. But of course, again, like we said, you got to have a stop. So you got to pick a, if it doesn't work, you know, you got to bail out if it breaks the low or something. Okay. So good stop is like under the low or something, you know, then bail, you know, because it's not always going to work, but it works a lot more than it doesn't for sure. And, and also context of the market in a bullish market, naturally bullish engulfings are going to work even more in a bearish market. I'm going to show you the bearish engulfing. So let's talk about the bearish engulfing and then we can see both. So bearish engulfing is the opposite. You have a green, happy body. Everybody's happy. The bulls are happy. They open it higher. It opens higher, opens higher. Bulls are coming in. Oh yeah, we're, we're have a party. They take it higher. During the course of the day, bears come in say, no, you're not. And create the big red body, close lower. And it becomes a bully to the downside. Uh-oh, you know, they're trapping them. So this is shorts trapped here. And this is longs trapped here, okay? And these are fantastic because you get nice trades out of those. And I'll just kind of show you some real quick on the daily chart. And then I'll show you in this SVX. Um, so, you know, just a, a great example right here. Um, bulls are happy, we're going higher. They open higher. They're like, yeah, we're going higher. They take it higher during the day. Bears are like, no, you're not. And then they close lower. Big red overtaking a green, bearish as can be. Boom. Bearish engulfing here too. Red body, uh, sorry, big red overtakes a, a, a small uh, green body. You get a pullback, okay? And just a side note, you can use these as exits too if you're long, okay? Don't forget that. If you had bought a stock and you see a bearish engulfing, maybe you want to get out of the way or take some profits before you give it away, okay? So don't forget, these are also exits too. Same for the shorts. If you're short and you see a bullish engulfing, get out of there, okay? If you're long puts, for example, and you see a bullish engulfing, move on because it may go up and you're going to give away your profits. Okay. So don't forget everything I'm telling you is the exit for the other side. Okay. If that makes sense, which is a very important point. We're not just teaching you entries, we're teaching you exits too. Okay. Don't forget that. It's a process, but it, slowly, if you get it, it's going to make sense to you. So uh, just remember, these can be your exits, but, but going back to my first point, this is a bearish engulfing, and that is a potential pause. Sometimes it doesn't mean it's going to collapse. Sometimes it'll go sideways, and then many times it'll fall. And let me show you in the SPX how what we see all day, every day. Um, basically, you know, you get these uh, bearish engulfings. Uh, right here, for example, this was, I think we, I know we took this trade today. Uh, this is the bearish engulfing at resistance. Okay. If I'm long, I bought this bullish bar and I, I see this, I'm out. Okay. Because I'm not giving away my money or profits. Okay. So don't forget. And then for the short people who are short with puts, that's where you buy your puts. And again, the same thing, just like the bullish engulfing, like Rod said, you don't need to wait for the confirmation. That is your confirmation, okay? Stop over the other side if you're wrong, and you're usually going to get a nice, especially in the current market, okay? We've seen it again and again. This is the, what, what I've been saying is a low confidence market, which is very important to understand that. It's a very low confidence market, meaning that rallies are sold, uh, you know, it, longs don't have a lot of time to make money. So you got to take advantage to the short side, and you're going to make more money. Okay, so bearish engulfings can mean a pause or a drop. Okay, it doesn't guaranteed, but it's just a higher probability. Okay, so that's a bearish engulfing. Okay, um, I'm going to leave it at that. And then we'll continue next time with the other patterns and stuff. But I think that's hopefully a good point. And then I'm going to leave it now open to questions. And I know like some of the option uh, premium members may have questions. And, and, you know, we can talk about, you know, some of that other stuff too, if you like. Uh, just kind of just, but again, related to this, not other stuff, please. Not related to options and all that. This is not the session, okay? So um, thank you all for joining. You know, of course, uh, I appreciate everybody joining. And 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 one more thing before I answer questions, try give Option Circle a try. I think you will not regret it. I mean, our the membership is so low. It's you're going to pay it off with one loss saved, or yeah, one. I think I, I think <laughs> we should we should open up and ask the members to the, to talk about that. Yeah, I could, could I get? 
a member, please. I mean, I mean, no, not begging you, but if, if somebody would just kind of two people or anybody, feel free. And again, no pressure. You know, I appreciate if you, you know, just we want to hear from somebody who's actually in the group and not us, like, you know, anybody want to? Yeah, sure, Sandeep. Uh, so, yeah, I've been a member since, uh, I guess, November. And this, you know, I've learned so much um, from the group and through the chat uh, and the midday call. So I would encourage, you know, everybody to join this um, this option circle. And the, the great thing about option circle is the platform. Uh, it has so many data points and it's extremely valuable. I mean, I used to watch CNBC, to be honest, and they were hardly giving any actionable um, trades. And I was wasting time. <laughs> but this this thing is magnificent. Awesome. So thank you. Good to hear. Yeah. Thanks, uh, one, thing yeah, I would add, mm -hmm. one thing I add is uh, this is a unique uh, uh, cohesive group and platform like a family. Uh, I've been uh, earlier subscribed to several other group and alert services. They don't uh, tell you uh, how to navigate and how to fish. Sandeep and team here uh, tells us how to do this and the way he's uh, uh, sharing all this detail is the lifelong learning, I would say. Then, um, you know, you can uh, uh, develop your own expertise and style and then this is the lifelong learning and the fees uh, you know there are a couple of options that is just you know if you attend the weekly uh, daily calls and the telegram channel that's much more uh, valuable than what the fees they are charging so i have learned so much in last uh, two to three months um, uh, you know after the membership it's a very unique and now in the hindsight, I said, gosh, if I learned that beginning of the last year, 2022, I have been in a totally different position and able to navigate all this trauma with a totally different approach and confidence level. Yeah, just to add, right? So the main thing I observed is uh, the secrets that so many professional traders don't share, especially from the technical point of view, like Sandeep or Raj, they share uh, for the premium members. I mean, uh, I, I never saw, I, I, I mean, in, a, in other services, what I saw was people were sharing the alerts, but here they're kind of going in, going from a fundamental point of view and also kind of sharing the secrets, how they actually put the trades. That, that I really love because no one revealed them. Um, and the other thing is the people are there to guide you that I, I thought the Telegram group was awesome, is awesome. Uh, and I'm uh, e eager or uh, more curious to learn more from this from this group. And Thanks, as honey. Sandeep said, right, uh, there, there are traders, there are like a daily traders, there are weekly traders. But what also I really like is, uh, um, you know, uh, C shoot shares the long term leaps, mm -hmm. and I entered a couple of trade based on his approach and the example he showed, and I got like fifty percent return within a matter of day. When you know, whenever you get those kind of chance, and uh, Shishu shares a lot of example, real type example with the alerts, and you can self serve using the platform. Uh, so you know, if you are not a day trader, if you like, uh, so there is something there for every style. So I really like uh, some of those leap strategies as well. Uh, earlier, you know, I did not know how the leap work, but, uh, you know, after joining the platform and uh, the group, um, you know, um, leap uh, strategy also is a good long-term approach for the traders or the investor who want to adopt that style. Nice, thanks for them. Appreciate that. And, and again, one more point that we're going to be adding, as far as the leaps you're talking about, we're going to be adding Jeff in uh, too and his techniques uh, from um, aim trading and all that too, which is going to be, I think, a game changer too. So we're going to be adding a lot. And, and of course, like you said, those trades that Shishu does are amazing. 
and uh, you know, and and I think they're just prices on their own, and we learn from those, and we can mimic them in different ways, you know, with different ways. But just the, the, it's great to see that. Good to hear. Uh, anybody else? And and again, somebody asked how much is the fee. Go to pricing. It's fifty percent off. Still, we're gonna. I think they're gonna keep it another week, and then we're gonna take it off. But before, especially you know, the plans go away. Really think you guys try it, and and you know, you could always if it doesn't work. Uh, I'll post a link in a minute, but or somebody can post in the chat. Um, but uh, the link to the pricing, but yeah, just give it a try. And if you don't like it, you're always, you can leave, but I don't think hopefully you will because you know, we're giving so much value and we're growing. And again, it's community. Uh, anybody else want to say anything? And if not, it's okay. Um, yeah, Sandeep so Sagar hey, here. Uh, hey, buddy. Wanted to just tell um, um, Sandeep, I think because of you, I was introduced to options. I had never looked at options at all. Uh, I've been on Forex for a long time. Didn't do much well there, but looks like option. Definitely, it's helping with all of your help, Raj, and other crew members in within Option Circle. And thanks for introducing to Option Circle. It's a great platform. Amazingly done. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Sagar. Hey, yeah, Sandeep. It's uh, Gavesh. I will say that uh, hey, you know, one of the uh, big biggest things for me has been that uh, you know not only learning but the way you break down the information. It's just amazing, right? You break it down in a very layman's format. You take time and have the patience to explain it. I'll, I'll, also, obviously, Raj and others are chiming in and providing the reasoning behind the trade so people can learn. You know, it's not just to trade, but also to learn something, which is a lifelong, uh, you know, valuable <laughs> information that you, people are uh, getting here. So, you know, it's, it's, I think if you don't, if you haven't tried it, try it. Seriously, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna lose. You're only gonna win. Awesome. Thanks, Gavesh. Hey, uh, awesome. one thing, this is this is Shaker. Hey, buddy. Okay. Hey, um, thank you so much. Uh, this is a group of captains, okay, like uh, Shishu, Sandeep, Raj, and uh, okay, like whoever in the front of the group. I'm learning every day okay, and every minute. Okay. And uh, moreover, the great thing being a part of this group is repairing the trade, okay, like uh, getting the guidance, okay, from the Shishu or Sandeep and Raj. How to repair your trade, okay, that's actually a great thing, which is a uh, Building the confidence, okay. I know, like uh, each and every trade is not a gain, but uh, sometimes okay, maybe like losing. But how to repair that trade? Okay, that's actually a great thing. Okay, which I'm learning from this. Thank you so much for everybody. Thank you. Nice to hear that. Yeah, repair is big. Yeah, because you you have to learn how to repair trades for sure, and that's what you know we try to do creative ways, you know, and stuff. And and actually, a good reminder that I want to trying to share some more ideas on that. So thanks, good to hear that, awesome. Thanks everybody. Um, and uh, yeah, well, thank you all uh, for that. And uh, if, if there's any more comments or questions, uh, we can also answer those uh, if anybody has. And again, like I said, please give us a try. And you know, if you, don't, if you don't like it, you can leave, but I think you'll find value and just, you know, and you'll see for yourself. And you know, if somebody asks, is it for beginners? Is it for no? It's for beginners, it's for intermediate, it's for advanced. It, you know, we're going to help you get to, you know, get you started. And that's part of these sessions are to get you understanding charting. You will get an options basic session that are pre-recorded that I have. You just ask me for it. If you join and you'll get that, which all the basic of options and Greeks and all that stuff for sure. And then this session will be recorded and you'll get that too. Uh, so, you know, we're going to keep educating you every day and continuously. And then, um, we're at, I think, uh, uh, Shishu's meeting Dan Nathan from CNBC tomorrow. Uh, so that's going to be, you know, we're going to see what, you know, a lot of big things coming up in that world. Uh, and then we're going to, you know, bring in Jeff and his uh, leap option strategies. And we're there's so much more coming down the pipeline. We're working on an SPX bot and different ways to kind of create a tr automated, you know, trade ideas, so on. But anyways, any questions um, and anything, you know, feel free uh, if you like. Um, or any comments or anything, please. On the charts Sandeep. or anything. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sandeep, could you touch base on, you know, what are the future learnings you have planned for the group as well? Perhaps uh, just uh, hint on what's coming. So people can also think about, you know, what they can learn about. 